Hello, my name is Stuart Watley and welcome to my new series. Uh, this is going to be part one of how to model a drift trike in SOLIDWORKS. So in case you've never seen or heard of drift triking before, I've just included a little video clip of a couple of friends of mine taking out their trikes for a bit of fun down in Cheddar Gorge over here in the UK. So basically drift trikes are the latest uh, kind of extreme sport or gravity sport that's come along taking the kind of the child's big wheel and making it into an adult thing so it's perfect for those guys the ones who have suffered their midlife crisis generally speaking we've got a wheel at the front either pedaled or pegs and then at the back we have nylon wheels uh, that are then used so we can spin and pull tricks around as we go down the hill as this is a fairly new sport or a new hobby, a lot of people are still building or designing their own frames, but there's a few mainstream manufacturers now that are starting to get involved. So I'd like to thank my friends over at JNR Drift Trikes and Drift Tri King, um, who I've borrowed this clip from. If you'd like to have a copy of this model, and then please visit GrabCAD, I've included the link there and either search for Drift Trike 15 or follow the link on screen. I've made the files available in SOLIDWORKS, in this case you need to download the, uh, the zip file. This includes everything in there, all the components. I've also included it in STEP, ASIS and PowerSolid for those people that are not using SOLIDWORKS. I would also like to thank some of the other contributors to GrabCAD uh, because I borrowed uh, the stem handlebars and brake lever directly from GrabCAD which saved me a lot of time to save modeling it all up. The other components I already had or have modeled and will be demonstrated during these next series of tutorials. There is a lot to go through in terms of this design so I've broken this down into four separate tutorials and this is part one where we're going to be looking at the design of the frame and then in subsequent tutorials we shall look at the fork design, the saddle and the rear wheels. There's different modelling techniques that are useful for all of these and we shall be explaining those in further detail. The frame is probably the most complicated part that we're going to do and it involves some interesting techniques. So we're going to have a look at layout sketch design, also multi-body design techniques and I'm going to go through some lofting features, some sweeps, we're going to be using the shell to scoop out the actual internals of the tube and there's also a little bit of sheet metal thrown in around the actual seat bracket. To design this frame, I'm going to use a layout sketch principle. So this is going to be a single sketch that I'm going to use that will help control all the rest of the model geometry within my design. Now this is a very powerful technique and it's a great way of actually controlling out a design. If it's done correctly, it can lead to very quick modifications of the design just by modifying that original sketch that all the other features are based on. If again, with this used correctly, you can use, uh, reduce errors within the actual rebuild times of the actual SOLIDWORKS model. The most complicated part on this design is the main down tube. Now believe it or not, a lot of these tubes are readily available for you, certainly if you find the right manufacturer. So I've been going through all my different frame tubes and I've decided on the one that I want to use, which is this one here. Now if you have a look at that, then for anyone that knows how to use SOLIDWORKS, you'll know that this is definitely a lofted design. So we're going to have to create uh, several tube uh, sections through our design and use a guide curve to control it to create this shape. So let's go into SOLIDWORKS and have a look. In true Blue Peter fashion, I have already created some of the sketches. So this is the layout sketch that I've been talking about. So this is going to be a single sketch where I've decided all the design features that I need for this trike. So if we zoom in, we can see how the headset is going to go and the frame angle or the fork angle. And also, if we look at the back here, we can see that the seat has a slight incline as well. I've also roughly laid out how my sketch is going to be created, so how this tube is going to be bent around the design. So with that done, I'm going to create all my other geometry around this sketch, but I'm not going to use this sketch for anything to design. So it's going to be left there at the top of my feature tree, and I've renamed it to my layout sketch. So later on, if I really wanted to modify this frame, I can just come back to this single sketch, and it's going to control my whole design. 
now I need to create my profiles that are going to make up my loft. Now to do those I'm going to need planes that are normal or perpendicular to the sketch that I've done. So I've already got a couple created but say I needed one in the middle here then I can pick a point on my layout sketch, one of those straight lines or any line really and then insert reference geometry and that will create me a plane perpendicular to that point through the rest of the actual sketch. Now I don't actually need that one so instead I'm just going to show you the two sketches that I've already done. So I've, I've used these having looked at my reference information off of that tube drawing that I had. So we can hide that plane now. And then I'm going to start to create this down tube. Now I'm going to start at the bottom here because the actual bottom half of my tube was straight. So all I'm going to do here is extrude that profile and I'm just going to click extrude it up to a point I'm using up to a point off that layout sketch that we created. So now we need to do our loft, so we need to get from the end of our straight bit of tube up to this profile here, but I want it to follow this kind of S shape. Now I'm not going to use my layout sketch, I'm going to create a new sketch and I'm just going to do a convert entities and select these bits of the tube. So I'm creating a new sketch that's referencing my layout sketch. Now we've got everything I need to do to create my loft. So if I hide my layout sketch, we're going to loft from our sketch to our feature or bottom part of our tube. So we're just going to click. Now again, uh, most people have done lofting before, if not, you see some of my other tutorials. But the trick with lofting is to kind of pick in roughly the same place on both profiles and to keep the number of segments in each profile the same. I'm using the option here for a center line loft, so I've got that single sketch that we just created, and that's going to control my loft. And I'm just going to switch on an end tangency here just to confirm that that kind of tube really follows in and blends with our rest of our tube. And that creates us our down tube. Okay, time to tidy up. Let's just hide that central uh, sketch. And then I'm going to turn on my layout sketch again, just to kind of remind me where we're going. I could do lots of different things, but I think the next area I'm going to do is I'm going to do the headset. So this is going to be a very simple revolve, but I'm going to create a new sketch on our central plane. And again, I'm not using any dimensions here. I'm just snapping onto my original layout sketch. So my layout sketch is going to be what controls the size of this headset. In fact, if I uh, just noticed here that I've actually just missed or haven't quite snapped onto that under underlying sketch. So let's redo that. So I've got a black, fully defined sketch. So if my layout sketch is updates, this is going to update my headset. And then a simple revolve, picking the central line. Now here, this is important. I'm going to unselect the merge result. I don't want this to be added onto or joined to my down tube. And this is, this is going to come clear later on, but it's because I want to keep that tube separate so I then can shell it all out and make it to the correct design. But we'll come back to that in a minute. So now we can concentrate on the other end of the tube. And what happens with these drift trikes is you tend to have a removable rear axle. So I'm going to create the actual bracket that uh, the rear axle is going to slot into. So this is basically a tube of uh, flattened metal. So I'm going to use a sketch and I'm going to do a thin extrude just for a couple of mil and I'm going to use the mid plane option to give us 400 mils worth of metal. Now because this isn't touching any piece of tube I don't need to worry about the merge result because effectively it will do that by default so it's now going to treat us as three separate bodies our headset, our down tube and our back axle. But now let's just tidy up these edges. So I'm going to do a, a, a large chamfer. Just going to mess around with the angles. Just want to kind of take this off. It just kind of gives it a bit of style on the end here. And I'll repeat that on the other side. Changing the direction as needed. Right, now this is going to be a, a good example of why I've used the layout sketch. I need to lengthen our piece of tube here so it matches in with the back here. Now that's going to need another loft, but I don't want to loft it this whole shape. I want to kind of continue this straight section and then I'm going to blend it in in a moment. So first off again, I'm just going to create another plane. 
at the end of my design, so using the same principle I did before, I'm going to pick a point and pick the edge of the sketch and do a sketch normal to the profile. And I'm going to do a squished bit of tube, so effectively that's just going to be an ellipse. I need a couple of dimensions here, as if, you know, if I was doing this properly, I'd measure the outside circumference of our original tube, and then I'd work out the measurements of this one, so my ellipse keeps me on the same profile or the same amount of metal going between my two tubes. But I know it's roughly 30 by 90. So I want to get these two pieces to match up. So I need to extend my down tube. Now I could create another sketch on the back of this face of the original tube here. But why is the point of doing that? I've created this tube around my layout sketch. So if I go back to my layout sketch, I've got a dimension on here just controlling the length. So let's just delete off a couple of these just so I can control it. And if I drag this part of the sketch, uh, I know roughly I want about 100 mil or so transition. So I can just put a dimension now from the back axle to the end of my tube. And the moment I come out of this sketch, my tube automatically updates. Now I can create the squishing or the, uh, the swaging of the tube onto my back mount. So again, this is another loft for my end face. Going on to that elliptical sketch that I created. I'm going to use some start tangency here. Tangency to the profile. This kind of blends our tubes in. Don't need to worry about the end profile. Now I need to make sure this gets uh, the, the result is merged. But I only want it to merge with our down tube. So that's where I can go in, choose the option there, and choose which part of the body that I actually want to merge that through. And then we can see finally that we've got still got three solid bodies. We've got our headset our down tube and our back place and all I need is a couple of fillets then along the outside edges of this tube and that is our main part of our down tube created. Okay so I've been going on about the fact these are three separate bodies, three separate lumps. So what is the advantage of that? Why have I been doing that? For starters, one of the first things I can do is just isolate out an individual piece. So here I've isolated out the down tube. At the moment, this is a solid shape. So I can then actually go into here, and I'm going to shell and turn this all to one and a half mil. So it's now turned into a piece of squash tube. So rather than me having to kind of do all that lofting and keep the wall thicknesses the same size, I can do it just as an individual piece. Now if we switch all the other bodies back on, I can start to tidy up the other ends. So I'm going to open a sketch on my headset. I'm just going to draw a circle, just going to convert the entities of that. It's going to be a through all cut, but this is again, if I just did it normally, that would remove the headset. But instead, I'm going to just pick which body I want this to work on. So I just pick the tube. Now it splits the tube in half, but I only need the main section of this. So I'm just going to use the bodies to keep option here and pick the back half. So that's the headset done. How about this bottom end here? We can see that our swaged bit of tube just goes inside our main kind of beam support area. So now I'm going to reuse the sketch that I did. So I'm just going to look back through my history till I find the sketch for the bracket. Pick that selected. I can just go straight to a cut extrude. And again, this is going to be choosing those options to through all and choose which body do I want it to chop. Well, I only want it to affect the down tube. Now, I've still got three separate pieces, but it's about this point here that I might want to combine these together to make one piece. And that's because if I wanted to put fillets on them, I wanted to kind of show where the weld is going to go. I need it to be a single piece. So I'm going to use the combined feature. I can pick all three pieces now and I'm going to add them together and that will turn it into one solid body. And now we can go in and I can put some fillets on here just to kind of attend as if it was welded at both the rear bracket and the headset. So I now need to create the side stiffening beams. Now I'm going to do that with a sweep. So the first thing I'm going to need is a sketch plane for me to sketch on. So I'm going to pick part of the actual original layout sketch and the right-hand plane and create a sketch perpendicular to that right-hand plane. 
If I drag this out, you can see where that plane's been created. Now what I'm going to do is just sketch where I want my side tube to go on this plane here. So I want it to come off the back face, then I want it to go around a bit of an angle, and I want it to join up actually with the end of our design. Or with the main tube, I should say. In fact, there's an, like an obvious point on our sketch here that might be quite a good place to stick this, which is just kind of at the end of the transitions, when our tube goes straight. All I need now, a couple of dimensions, just to finish off this layout design. determined to get it snapped actually onto that point so if at first you don't succeed just pick both two pieces and add a coincident relationship so I've closed that sketch down and now we're going to do a sweep so what I need to do is actually just to pick the original sketch that I've just used and then I'm going to do a circular profile and sweep that along that sketch I'm going to choose all the options that are going to work with this design. So I'm going to use a fin feature to hollow it out and making sure that the thickness is in on the inside of my design. And then all I need to do now is to mirror our new pr profile or our new bit of tube just onto the other side of my frame design. So the final part of our design is the metal plate that is folded and welded onto the top of our frame that our seat can bolt onto. So I'm just going to create a quick copy of the existing plane. So I'm just using my control key to drag up that plane we created for our uh, side stiffening tubes. And then we can open a sketch on the top of this. Now I just want it to match the original kind of layout of our tubes. So if I show that sketch that we did for our sweep, then I can select those edges and then we can just use a convert entities and just copy those pieces to create our kind of our main base. I need just a couple other bits of sketches and a little bit of trimming, putting it all together. So I'm going to make this out of sheet metal because I would like the flattened uh, shape. So we can either get this cut from a piece of metal or lasered. So I'm going to use our sheet metal, give it a thickness, and make sure we're extruding above our metal work. And that gives us our first bit of plate. Because I said that this was going to be made from sheet metal, and I used the base extrude or the sheet metal uh, base flange, what I can then do is use edge flanges just to pull down the geometry. Now I know I want it to kind of just roughly go to the top of the tubes um, because then what we'd actually do, we don't need to kind of round it off to match it perfectly because you want a little bit of a gap to run our weld along. So if we just kind of mess around with the sizes here, I think roughly about 17 mil should see me right. Now I can't roll it around uh, that corner there, but I can certainly pick this side edge here as well. And we'll use those both at that same distance of 17 mil. So that's kind of half my seat. So all I'm going to do is then go in and we'll just do a feature mirror. And making sure to merge the result. So this is going to just merge it onto itself, not onto the rest of the actual components. And then that's our completed plate. I just need to put the holes in if I needed to. But here we can go and have a look at our flattened shape. So we could just save that out, send that right the way off to get it lasered or get it punched. And with that, certainly once we put our seat holes in, maybe some holes on the back part just to kind of lock our rear axle in, is our completed tube. So that was how to model the uh, drift trike frame. Uh, please keep uh, an eye on our YouTube channel. There'll be further videos coming out over the next uh, couple of weeks uh, where we model up the actual forks and the uh, the wheels as well as the seat. So they're kind of a, something there for everyone. So from plastic moulding 
uh, some more fabrication work um, and just some a little bit of surface modeling actually that's going to be involved in the wheel design as well as the seat design uh, so hopefully you've enjoyed that if you've got any questions uh, then again please email me at stuart.wortley at cadtech.com and remember the model is available from GrabCAD uh, please see the link at the start of the video thank you bye bye